This week, I'm out of quarantine and loving it. Talking drone work with my brother Dave. And moving water via ditching and tiling and the machines that are used to complete the task. This is the Rural Reflections Podcast. Welcome to the Rural Reflections Podcast, co-hosted by Dave Nelson in Carrington, North Dakota, and myself, Grant Nelson, here at the studios of Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Dave, I uh, I have been released into the wild. I'm done with my quarantine, as I had had close contact with somebody with COVID-19 a couple of weeks ago. Man, it feels good to be actually be able to come into a studio or just come into town i'm gonna go get coffee and everything at a convenience store so uh, I'm, I'm back amongst the the rest of the world well that's good to hear <laughs> i uh haven't had the joy of being quarantined yet but uh i know of several people that have we have people work for us and stuff that have so i know it's no fun <laughs> no it, it, it was and you know i i worked at the radio station uh, both weeks remotely using uh, Google Meets, and uh, it was really it was interesting how quickly it became normal. I, I tell you, it's just amazing how important high speed internet has been here in the last couple months. So it's really kind of kept everything moving. Yeah, I know the same thing here. You know, when the the school was zooming and that kind of thing, uh, and they still are depending on the student, whether they've chosen to be distant learning or in person. But, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing what that has done. If you didn't have that, I don't think you could, I don't think you could do this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, if it was any kind of Internet other than high speed, uh, I don't think it would work. I agree with you. I mean, it's just... I don't know if it's as revolutionary as getting electric out on the farm, but I'll tell you what, it's it's a darn close second, if nothing else. It's really helped an awful lot. Now, uh, talking about technology, I've been out with the drone flying at the uh, reservoir that they're creating just south of our place. It's a whole section of land that they're working on. It's really enjoyable. I've, I've had fun working for one engineering company and now just going out and doing some before pictures of this huge, you know, it's an $8.8 million project that's going to take up an awful lot of acre feet of uh, water and prevent it from going into the Black River, which eventually goes into the Red Lake River. But I guess the thing about it is it's just been fun to have a task to do with the drone and to have, you know, something almost like an assignment, like a, like a test to try and do all the little different things and, and watch and make sure you get good pictures. And I know Dave, you've got quite a bit of experience working with drones also. Yes, and I I think the same thing. I mean, it's nice to have a mission when you're going to go flying because you can only take so many pictures of yourself from 125 feet or 200 feet or 400 feet or or your house or that kind of thing. So yes, it is nice to have a a plan when you're going to go out. Is Much it? Of the stuff that that we did was just to map fields, and that's a kind of an automatic thing. Uh, so that wasn't all that much fun. There was no maneuvering to do. You just let it start from wherever it starts and it tell it where to go and it goes and does the map and comes back. But, uh, it is nice to have a mission when you're fine. It's the truth. I mean, it's just something like uh, something to accomplish. And you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, two old, really old plow boys, although I never even got a chance to plow. I think you did, but dad would never let me plow. Here we are now. We're, uh, what, high-tech rednecks? I guess that would be, I, I'd accept that, yes. I would too. You know, honestly, I've found, as I've been going through things, working at, well, working at the sheriff's office, I did quite a bit of work there, and uh, the people who were best with technology were the people who'd come off farms or who knew how to work on cars or could understand, you know, the systems, how they all work together. Those were the people who were the best ones at maybe dealing with the actual technology, the nuts and bolts of getting technology to work with itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's it's funny because um, in our shop, um, 
there are, well, there's three of us that have been flying the drone and we're 65 and 63 and 50. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, the kids haven't done it yet. Well, I'll tell you what, and I'm, this is nothing against the younger generation, but I found also uh, when I was at the sheriff's office teaching new people, new em- employees, some of the older people really understood or got to understand the software a lot more quickly than younger people. They were good with the apps, the young, younger folks, but the older people understood the, the software, the, the larger picture. They seemed to grasp that more quickly. Well, and, you know, if you started out having to memorize keystrokes on a computer to do things, and, and then all of a sudden now there's one button, and uh, I guess if you're running an iPad, you can probably just wipe it away with your hand, you know? Yeah. Um, it's different, so you probably have appreciated the changes as they come along enough to uh, remember how it used to be and really like how it is now, you know? Yeah, typing in line commands. I remember that. That that almost gives me a just a little whiff of PTSD. That was a that was a lot of memorizing to do. Now, coming up in the next uh, portion of our podcast this morning, we're going to talk about the new little black dress which is ditching out in the field. And also we're going to take a quick break. We're going to do my online column which talks a little bit about quarantine and then we'll be back with the second half of our podcast right after this. I'm Grant Nelson, and this is Real Reflections. I'm writing to you today from quarantine. By the time you hear what I've written, I will either be out of quarantine or close. Now, Lisa and I came into close contact with a family member who later tested positive for the presence of the coronavirus, which causes the disease known as COVID-19. Lisa and I have never had symptoms. However, we needed to begin a 14-day quarantine period as soon as we were notified of our contact. Lisa had already been working from home for months, so that was not a large transition. The idea that we could no longer have any contact was a little more to swallow. However, most of the people we normally see had come into close contact at the same place, same small family gathering. Our communication has now been mostly phone and little messaging. Most of my work does not occur at home. I work for Thief River Falls Radio, and my time is spent mostly at their studios. I was fortunate to have recently built a home studio and office in preparation for bad winter storms when I was unable to travel. I hadn't even thought that I would use it more than two or three times a year. However, I've spent the last two weeks broadcasting from what used to be a bedroom and storage place for Lisa's collection of dolls. (laughs) The quarantine period has been an interesting experience, but I was concerned when we first were notified. Most people who are infected by the coronavirus recover without incident, and some never even show symptoms. However, I was concerned, particularly during the first three or four days during the time when symptoms of an infection would most likely become apparent. Thankfully, we're fine. Humor is one way to create courage in any new situation, and I've found humor while quarantined with Lisa. It's funny to meet upstairs at the head of the steps and tell each other to have a good day at work as Lisa heads downstairs on her 13-step commute to work. There's also been the competition to not use the last of the coffee as the last user has to make a new pot. We're now entering a period of COVID-19 that some health experts have called a surge. The seven-day average of the new COVID-19 cases has soared 23% in the past week, according to Johns Hopkins data. The seven-day average of new tests performed has risen only 2.87% over the past week, according to the COVID Tracking Project. Minnesota Department of Health Commissioner Jan Malcolm told reporters uh, last Monday that case growth has outpaced the increase in testing, meaning the rise in COVID-19 is not just a function of more testing. The rate of COVID-19 cases is rising, rising more quickly than the rate of testing. People have lost interest in COVID-19. However, COVID-19 is still very interested in us. Much of what we do now is to protect the most vulnerable of our community. Wearing a mask or maintaining social distancing is not about self-preservation. It's about compassion. Anyway, I'm glad to be off quarantine. We hope to stay that way. I'm Grant Nelson. This is Rural Reflections. 
Welcome back to the second half of our Rural Reflections podcast. Now, Dave, if you looked out your window uh, today, which is a Sunday, it's pretty cold outside. There's probably not a lot of ditching going on, but recently there's been plenty of it. And with warmer temps coming up in the next couple of days, we're probably going to see a little bit more. Oh, I think so. Uh, we've had a, a lot of it here, a uh, lot of different kinds, you know, people that are just cleaning up an existing drain, uh, some people making something new, some people putting their little V-ditchers to work and making a trench across the top of a hill and over to the road to, you know, try and drain some little spot in the spring before they get in. So, yeah, there's been a lot of it going on here, and I suspect there'll be a lot more this week because, you know, ground ground is dry, and, of course, you can access any place now, unlike last year where you couldn't get anywhere. And uh, so there's some pent-up ditching anxiety, I know, and there's a lot of people that have been doing it and a lot of people that have the equipment now. A little bit of recreational ditching going on in addition to what's needed. Have you ever seen those those hurricane ditchers or whatever, the PTO-driven ones? Yes, yeah. They really, uh, that, that's just kind of fun just to go see the dirt get thrown around. I think it's satisfying, too. I've watched videos. I've never... Now, Steiger's, uh, Steiger Manufacturing, which is just southeast of us, they've made them before, but I've I've never seen theirs in person, but I've seen video, and I thought to myself, ah, oh, that's just plain cool. I mean, there's something really satisfying about watching a ditch appear out of nowhere, and then the dirt, you don't even have to worry about the spoil. It just goes flinging all over the place, so you can just run a disc across it or maybe just go it next time you're doing chisel plowing or cultivating or whatever and pretty much disappears so it's kind of nice um you know years and years ago they used to use drag lines for ditching but we've progressed quite a bit from there it seems like yeah we sure have i mean everybody that has a, a scraper now the first thing they want to do is they want a ditching program for it you know uh the tractors are are ready for it, so all they need is electronics to connect to the electronic hydraulics on the tractors, and away you go. You have a ditching machine by GPS, you know. Remember in the old days, it was magic. You know, somebody who uh, somebody had a bulldozer and was skilled enough to make water flow in the right direction just by looking at it are looking at the the level of the ground i mean they were pretty prized they were uh they were seen quite highly in the community and now with uh, the advent of gps or uh lasers or any number of technology it seems like everybody's getting some pretty nice ditching done out there yeah it is very nice actually i've seen a a couple of spots that they had a a, a low spot next to a tree row and it was always wet. They never seen it, you know. And one year, here comes this ditch out of nowhere across there. And uh, it drained, you know, and it actually worked. Yeah. You know, that's that's the thing. I think a lot of the old ditching. I remember when Dad had the farm ditched. And somebody came out there, you know, and they used a transit. And there was a lass driven in all the way along it with numbers on them that I'm sure told the scraper operator that you're taking an inch here and two inches here and there's your slope or whatever, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was up to the man in the seat of the, the cat at that time to follow the the sticks. But now they drive the they drive the course and turn around and, and ditch it backwards, you know, and it just takes out what it needs. It's pretty crazy. It really is. I'm always amazed by what people can do. And even the tiling now, I, there's an amazing amount of tiling. There's a there's an underground river going on in a lot of different fields. I even know some of the neighbors, there was a fellow putting in tiling and he had his large drain culvert, which I think he was going to put a 13, or no, he's going to put a 15 inch in. And the other neighbor said, well, if I can tee into that, I'll pay for part of it, and let's make it into an 18-inch. I think that's what they put in there was an 18-inch for a main one that then drains into a judicial ditch that eventually becomes the Black River. So, I mean, there's a whole other infrastructure underground now that you don't even see. I know. It's, it's crazy that many, many acres have been tiled, and there would be more 
except that the demand is so high that uh, they can't get it done. I've heard that. I've heard that there's people who are uh, have even set up new companies in other areas because they just they needed they had so much work to do that they needed a, a home base to work out of, and that it's really a crazy amount of demand even for the the pipe and that sort of thing, and uh, for the actual machinery that puts it in the ground. It's it's kind of amazing at uh, what an industry it came came about of that you know and really i think when it first came out i mean i can only speak for myself i remember hearing about it and it's like oh it's like buying the land again i'm like who is gonna do that and why would you but it seems like it's worked out really well for a lot of people well i think it's you know people that owned owned land you know so are you going to go and and buy some more land or are you going to try and make your land produce better you know so it's probably in the long run a far cheaper option to improve your land than it is to buy new and start trying to do something with that. I think that's right. And I think even landlords have seen that I've heard of landlords working out deals with the people who rent from them and they get a premium for rental because they put in the tiling. So, you know, they probably get payback of seven to 10 years or something like that. And they've got tiled ground that really, somebody else has paid for so it uh, works out pretty well dave you got anything else for us this week no i'm just gonna plan on enjoying this week of 60 degree weather before we get colder but uh i hope it's nice for everybody and hope you have a good week Thanks, Dave. You too. There he is, Dave Nelson in Carrington, North Dakota, co-host of the Rural Reflections podcast. And I'm Grant Nelson here at the studios of Thief River Falls Radio. 